I was pushing a lot today. On the two Merlet, I was at 330 watts. It seems like the guys are falling off. I'm gonna keep it up. I didn't really want to ride away, but if it happens, it happens. I look back, I have a, lo a little gap. So I just start pushing a little bit more power. I went to 350, 360 for a little bit. And the gap was growing and growing and growing. And at that point, I knew this is my day. This is my chance. <laughs> What's up guys, what's up cycling fanatics? Welcome back to part three of this Hodru documentary. Right now I'm in this very beautiful park in the city of Tarbes, which is the finishing city of stage three. Today was a crazy day, today was a fantastic day, today was an amazing day. I, I just don't know what to say. I keep surprising myself. Let's first talk about today's stage. It was a big day again, 155 kilometers with three thousand and three hundred meters of climbing going over two big climbs starting with the Soulor and then the very well-known Tourmalet. It's been featured in the Tour de France multiple times and man this was one big beast of a climb. The views were spectacular, the roads were nice, the weather was fantastic and the suffering was bad. My preparation actually started last night. Everything was wet yesterday. Torrential rain, lightning, thunder, it was crazy. I, I put the air dryer on automatic on my shoes. I cleaned my bike, I cleaned my chain, re the chain, put the new race sticker on my bike, prepared my food, I did my nutrition planning. You know, everything, I just want to have everything ready for the next day because it's always early yesterday one thing that's really difficult when you do a race like this with multiple stages is to eat enough every day of the race i'm trying to keep up on my carbs i think today it's a good day to catch up sort of already on day two because we only did two hours of riding instead of five so what i try to do every day is to get oatmeal in I put 200 grams of oatmeal in a shaker with raisins and just fill it up with water. And then I always bring my cutlery set and you can eat it straight away. And then I also took these waffles, took them from home. It takes a lot of carbs, a little bit of protein. That's just extra. It's handy straight away. You don't have to go to a restaurant or stuff. And then when I eat the food or when I plan to do so, I put it in the Eat My Ride app and I can also see what happened with the race of today because i planned a very big five hour race and it only was a two hour ride after the race is uploaded from my head unit it also shoots into the eat my ride app which will then compare it to what i had planned and then we will recalculate the rest of my meals of today so instead of having to eat like 1300 grams of carbohydrates today i'm only going to be needing like 800 or so this will really help you to get enough food in Day by day. We started at 7.30 this morning, so breakfast was at 5.30. Alarm went off at 5.25. 5.25, stage three, breakfast first. So after day one and day two, we came up with a, a little bit of a strategy. There's part of the route which are not timed for safety reasons. You can make use of that, wait for your buddies and then in the valley ride with a very fast group and make up time. This stuff happens in these races and I don't like this, but hey. Don't hate the player, hate the game. You get to know a lot of people when you do an event like this and everybody has his own intentions. Everybody is racing somebody in the GC. So if you find the right people, they will be willing to work. Stage three is about to go down. The next hotel in Tarvis is next hotel. Oh, this is Merci beaucoup. Morning. Morning. Rolling to the start, stage three. It's uh, it's actually not that cold. I think the weather is going to be so much better than uh, yesterday. We are going to climb up quite a bit, so on top of the climb, it will be a little bit fresh. So we're bringing uh, a wind vest, but for the rest, not much. 12 minutes past seven, about 20 minutes to start a race. Good morning, yes. Bien? Yeah. Let's go to the beginning of the race because we had a strategy for today. It's uh, 
20k of neutral so taking it easy this part is a lot of roads cars traffic lights so uh, that's why it's neutral i had a pretty big breakfast this morning because i knew we had like an hour of neutral so i could eat a little bit more but right now i've got the carbohydrates for up to my nose man i mean if i sneeze you would see flying carbs everywhere it's hard to get them in even on day three and we still have three days to go we had a massive neutralized part and then there was 20k leading to the first climb the Sulor. so we were planning to, to to stop just before where the timing started and then hammer it like crazy with a groove with a pace line we were going so fast we were passing all the other riders and there were a lot <laughs> us almost to where the actual climb started we made it up with the first group in theory virtually leading by three and a half minutes while we're right next to them so that's crazy right first climb very hard but manageable True climbers, let's say that. Marco, Rod, Michele, Jeremy, they left, they took off. I can stay on their wheel for 10 minutes and then I smoke myself, so I'm not gonna do that. I found my own little group, the same group as day one, the same group as day two. These guys are all kind of similar in power. on one side cows on the other side and then we reached the top there was a feed zone but i didn't want to stop i had communicated with marco he has his parents here to help him to service him during the race they had an extra bottle for me with water so marco's dad gave me the bottle <laughs> And then we went into that descent, the descent of the Sulor. First time in this race was timed. Rod, the guy that was leading, he was up the road. So I figured if I descend fast enough, I'll catch up with him. So we went down really, really fast. I've got Simon on my wheel, dude. He can descend very well. I mean, he stayed in my wheel and he's a light guy. Props for him, respect.
flying down. I catch up with Rod, the Scandinavian guys. They came back eventually. They had to push a bit for that. And they were the long bit in between. This was in the valley. It was relatively flat. It was going up and down a little bit through some villages. And we pushed hard. We worked together towards the Tuna Lake. Riding in the valley, just descended to Lor, and now getting ourselves ready for Tourmalet. Really, really big climb. I had burned a lot of energy already going towards the Tourmalet, and we have this massive, massive beast of a climb to go. So I tried to save up in that valley a little bit, but also try to go as fast as we could. Stayed in the pace line, kept rotating with these guys, and eat. Eat a lot. That was really important. Okay, we are at the bottom of Tourmalet, 21 kilometer climb. I've burned so much energy already. I'm down 290 grams of glycogen and we still have to do 20K of climbing. What happened? Well, I stopped at the aid station. Yeah. Oh. My stupidity. Did you stop? No, no. I didn't see you. Sami, he kind of missed us in that descent. So he put in a big, big effort to get back to us. And he was smashed. We started working in the Tourmalet. You know, the beginning was kind of flat, not super steep. I was pushing a lot today. On the Tourmalet, I was at 330 watts. And then we rolled to this feeding zone with about 10K to go to the top. I think one guy had to stop for a bottle. The rest just kept on going, but they didn't go that fast. And I just kept up the pace. 900 meters of elevation, 10K to go. I just kept my pace and it seems like the guys are falling off. I'm gonna keep it up. I didn't really want to ride away, but it happens. I look back, I have a, lo a little gap. So I just start pushing a little bit more power. I went to 350, 360 for a little bit. And the gap was growing and growing and growing. And at that point, I knew this is my day. This is my chance. Awesome. Left and right, freaking mountains, Paras pent guy just above my head, ski lifts going up and down, we've got cows left and right on the road, and obviously you get higher and higher, the elevation just keeps on counting, and anything above 1500 meters, your power is gonna suffer. To keep that 330 watts average was gonna get harder and harder and harder. At some point I could even see rod riding in one of those switchbacks, so that was kind of crazy. 6.6 to go, 540 meters to go, slightly less than half an hour. Elevation, 1600. Views, fantastic. So riding up the Tourmalet, 8K to go, it was still a, a tailwind, but at some point, two, three switchbacks up, 
the wind just completely turned direction, I am facing a massive freaking headwind. I'm almost super tucking at 9% gradient. This is really windy. 5k to go. The gap just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I started getting more and more energy and more motivation. I was like, fuck yeah. That's the top of the Tourmalet, 2100 meters, I dropped them all. I didn't choke, I didn't crack, I could make it all the way up to the top, to 2100 meters. On top of the Tourmalet, time was cut, there was a feed zone, and I started refueling and fill up my pockets. Jasper! What's up bro? You're an animal. Yeah, I used to be a lion in my previous life. You yeah, I just kept face at the feed zone and then I, I, I saw... Uh, you guys were <laughs> giving me a gap. Yeah, I just had to recover for the first half now, climbing after my yeah, yeah. 48 TT. Yeah. Okay, we're at the top of the Tourmalet. We're gonna descend, probably wait for a little bit because this is not timed. The timing stopped at the top. Uh, after the descent, it's like 30K of sort of flat downhill toward the finish. It would be nice if we can rotate. are in the, at the end of the non-time zone it starts right there but uh, we're gonna have a little break we're gonna warm up because it was so cold on the descent and then uh, we're gonna smash it on the last part yeah yeah did you see him We had a great time, we played around, we made it into a race. Everybody was okay with it. Like after the finish, these two guys, Felix and Era, they even like sprinted to the finish line for one second. But it was fun, man. After the race, you just give each other a fist bump and you're happy. Picture. Really, really nice day. Very nice village here at the finish spectacular performance by yours truly i don't know how i did it but it's i i'm surprised i'm surprised again i don't know what the result is but we're gonna find out soon the race bag is here hello hello thank you so what happened to the time 
what happened to my GC? Well, I did learn one thing today. The first 25 riders of the GC get the same start time. When the first rider of these 25 passes through the start gate, everybody's time starts. So <laughs> what we did, our little trick, our little plan was all for nothing. We spent a whole lot of energy by waiting while our time was actually already started, but we didn't know that. Apparently it's in the rule book I heard today, but we didn't know. And then we just went like crazy to catch up and be with them right to the top, get the same time. So that didn't help me in the GC. Marco, the winner of last year, he passed me in the GC because he went crazy fast. Michele, the winner of today, he passed me in the GC. And then Jeremy, this French guy, apparently he's super fast as well. He was in front of me, he passed me as well. So I went from fourth to sixth in the GC. I did make some time up on the number four, Sami. So it's gonna be a battle. This is day three out of five. So we still have two days to go. We still have lots of time to ride and we still have many chances to make or break this race. Go click up here for the next episode. Guys, I'm gonna see you next time. See ya. Bonjour.